Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I hope everybody had a great Christmas, a great New Year, and are doing well in 2020. So this will be our first video of 2020, so that's awesome. Um, been really sick, uh, the whole family has. It's kinda sucked, to be honest with you. The sinuses and the coughing and all that junk, it just, it's been kinda miserable. Um, but I'm finally feeling better, which is why I'm out in the garage getting ready to do some painting for you guys. Today I'm going to show you guys something I got for Christmas, which is the Green Stuff World Color Shifting Paint Series. Now this is set number two, they've got set number one. Um, we're going to give it a try. Uh, I'll put the link down in the description below of what this product is. Uh, my wife got it for Christmas for me and she said she had to order it. It came from like Spain, so it wasn't exactly easy to get over here. Took a little while, but we got it and we're going to give it a shot. So let's get to it. All right, so I've prepared two baits, um, got them brushed up with the Scotch-Brite, um, taped up the bills, so those are ready to go, two little square bills. Here's the paint here. Part of the instructions is, shake well, use over a black base coat. For the best effects, use gloss base, uh, black coat, so it'll increase the effect. Now, the color we're gonna be using is this Red Goblin. As you can see, it shifts from like a yellow to a green to a red. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two baits, we're gonna coat them both with opaque black, and then what I'm gonna do with one of them is I am gonna put the um, UV clear coat on this, dump it in the UV chamber, leave the other one just with this plain black on it, and then we're gonna compare the two to see which one is actually gonna be better. The one with the, the high gloss clear coat or the one with the, you know, just the regular black on it. So, you know, maybe if you buy this or whatever, you'll know what you're looking at and what's gonna get you the best color shift pattern. So, as soon as we come back, we're gonna have two black baits and then one's gonna be going in the, in the UV chamber to get cured up. All right, so we've got these two baits painted up really well. Uh, multiple layers of the black to get that good gloss coat. Um, this one we're going to go ahead and put in the UV chamber. I'm uh, going to put a clear coat on it, going to dip it in there, and then we'll let that cure. That'll take about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, while we're waiting on that one, we'll go ahead and get this one painted. So let's get to that next step. All right, so we've got the Aluma Light UV, Aluma UV here. Um, watched a lot of people, Marling has been using this, uh, Engineered Angler has been using this. There's a bunch of people that have been using this and it seems to be, uh, you know, kind of a preferred method. And it goes pretty, pretty far. Um, if I can get my hands right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna brush this on, on a pretty heavy coat, um, just to get it on there really well. Um, I don't have a big enough bucket of this stuff to be uh, dipping it yet. I'm going to buy some. I wanted to just try it out just to see if I was actually going to like it. Um, you know, anytime you use a new product, I was using that KBS Diamond Clear for a while, and, and that was good. Um, it just takes so long to cure that product. You know, it's, it's an overnight thing, and, you know... Uh, if I want to try to do something like a one-day build, like you know Nate Marling does, or you know even if I'm planning a fishing trip, within a short amount of time from the time I'm making some baits, I might not have that full overnight time frame to be waiting to uh, you know get a bait cured up or whatnot. So uh, this is just a different way to do it. Get it done the same way. Uh, you can brush this on. You can let it hang similar to the KBS or some of the other products that you would dip. Um, and what ends up happening is while it's hanging, uh, this stuff doesn't cure unless you put it in that UV light source, like a light chamber or you know out in direct sunlight or something like that. Um, so basically you can just let it hang and it will run similar to some of those other products. So, um, and by run, I mean kind of even, you know, self level if you will so i'm just kind of putting this on making sure i've got every little bit covered trying to make it as even as possible then i'll let it hang for just a minute because i'm brushing it on i'm not dipping it so it, it's going to go on a little bit more evenly 
um, you know, with this process versus just hanging it. So there we go. We've got the clear coat on there. I would say that's gloss black now. Uh, I'm going to take one of my hooks up here and we're going to go put it in the UV chamber. All right, she's been hanging for a minute here. Gonna go ahead and take her over here to my UV chamber. This is a homemade job. It works just fine though. There we go, we got her hung in there. Good secure fit. So she's dangling there. Gonna flip on the power to both of the lights. Put the lid on there, secure it up, and we'll come back in about 20 minutes and that'll be good to go. All right, we got the one in the UV chamber over there. We've got the red goblin stuff here. Um, I don't know if hopefully that's focusing. Green stuff works, red goblin. It says apply it over the black with light coats until the black is completely covered. Now I've never done this before. I really cleaned out the airbrush really well to get as much of the black out as I could so that it wouldn't obviously affect all this. So I'm just gonna start off with a few drops in this and we're gonna see, looks like I gotta puncture the tip of this. I guess it's a good thing I got an old treble laying here. Don't go past the barb, hopefully. Into my finger either, that would be no good. All right, let's see, if, whoops, let's see if that actually punctured it. It did. All right, I turned my air pressure way down to like 20-ish. Um, because this stuff is pretty thin. It's kind of as thin as the auto color. So let's see how it looks here. Let me make sure everything's in, in line. There we go. I'm just using very, very little action on the airbrush just barely pulling back on it so we can put on light coats as it says um, just like I said barely barely pulling back on it not giving it a lot of flow Okay, I don't know if you can start to see that a little bit, but it is starting to shift. So we're gonna let that sit. Let's hit it with the heat gun over here really quick. With that light of a with that light of a coat, it shouldn't take much of the heat gun to get it dried. So here we go again, next coat. I am working the action a little bit more on this second coat with the airbrush, giving it a little bit more paint flow. You can hear it sputtering a little bit, but that's okay. I think that's because of the low air pressure. Maybe this stuff needs to be at a little bit higher air pressure. I'm gonna turn the air pressure up just a little bit here. And we're gonna hit the heat gun. Okay, here we go again. 
it's weird if you look at this paint it's all red in there and then look how it shows up on the bait it's more of that greenish hue Getting a little more aggressive, getting that color on there. There we go on the back end. I can definitely see some of the color shifting happening. It's very metallic-like. One more little layer here and we'll say this one is good yes I'm putting it on thicker if I can get my hands just right So here we have the first one, which was just the straight opaque black on top of the, the bait. And then the, we painted it with the Red Goblin right on top of the opaque black the, without any extra gloss or anything like that. I can see the color shift. Um, it's, it's very slight, but it is from red you can see kind of the red hue there on top and then when you rotate it the green it's pretty neat there's that bright green and as it rolls around underneath the light you get that different shifting of the colors so that's pretty neat so uh, now we'll pull the one out of the UV chamber and we'll give it a whirl and see what the different outcome is for this bait if it actually looks a little different than this on top of that clear coat Okay, first bait's done, um, except we haven't done a, another clear coat or I've done a clear coat on it. We're going to come over here and take a look at the one that's been in the UV chamber. It's been about 20 minutes. Um, I think it should be good to go, but we'll see. So, here we are. You can see it down in there, looking pretty cool. Um, We'll pull it out and take a look here. This is a homemade dill I did over Thanksgiving. 
I actually made a video about it, but it didn't turn out very good. So let me clip this back in here. There we go. Oh yeah, that's good and cured. You see how shiny that is? A uh, little bit of a run right there, but it's actually not that big of a deal. It'll cover up when we do our final clear coat. So we're gonna take this off, break that free on the tail. Might be easier to pull it this way. There we go. Okay, so here we have this one ready to go. I should have probably taken that tape off before I clear coated it, but that's all right. So there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our red goblin on this one and we'll see what we get. Okay, I would say that's a super gloss black and we're gonna just slowly, like we did before, start applying this red goblin and see what happens. Ooh, that is a little better, I think. Again, we're gonna do a couple of really light coats first, and then we'll come back and do a, a little bit of a heavier coat. Yeah, that's already looking pretty cool. Let me hit the heat gun on it and we'll go for coat number two. All right, coat number two. Right, gonna heat coat it and then we'll put on that heavy third coat. Okay, ready for that heavier third final coat. Now I think one of the problems with this one, at least from what I can see, I put that clear coat on so thick to get that super shiny look that I actually washed out the scale patterns. It clear coated the scale patterns flat. And there we have it. Um, let me get, make sure we're getting this thing in focus. You can see the shift from the red to the green along the top, the back, the sides. But you can see we lost the detail of the actual scales on this, this one. 
because of that heavier clear coat, which will affect the way it reflects in the water. So when we compare the two, let me put the other one on this same helping and setup. So now we have both of them here. You can see as we shift around how they, they compare. There's that run on that one there, right there. That didn't turn out very good, but that's okay. Again, this is test. This is just testing this stuff. I'm digging the one, well, I dig them both actually, but I think this one, the one that we didn't clear coat first actually turned out a little better just because of all the details still being there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put some eyeballs on these, and then we're gonna actually clear coat them for a final clear coat, and we'll take a look and see what we actually ended up with here. Lesson learned from earlier on this one, which is that I'm not going to put the clear on nearly as heavy as I did that first time, just for the sake of not trying to wash out the scale pattern on this one, because I think it, it's gonna turn out a little bit better, frankly. Um, actually, let's leave that sitting there for a second. I'm just going to hang this one up for now. Over here out of the way. So that we can just do one at a time and get it done. So this one I'm just going to apply the clear, lightly stroking it on, getting good coverage. That's really all we're worried about here. Don't want to put it on too thick or we'll end up with the same problem we had last time. We don't want to wash out the eyes or anything. It does help. The clear does help the uh, over the top of the um, the paint, it does make it pop a little bit more. That looks pretty darn cool. Um, missed a little spot on the belly there. Because of how thin I'm putting it on, it's just like skating across it. And I can actually see where I've missed spots, hopefully. Because we want a nice even coat on here. And I did forget to put the eyes on this one. Not a big deal, I can do that afterwards. I usually put two coats of the clear on anyway, so after this first coat sets, we'll put the eyes on and put another coat over it. So there's number one, gonna go hang that in the UV chamber and we'll get the eyes and get them put on that other one. Since we got ahead of ourselves on the last one, we're gonna go ahead and get the eyes put on this one before we do the clear coat. I've got some crazy cool red eyes to put on this because it is the red goblin after all. So I'm gonna take some of my Gorilla Glue here just a little drop is all it takes folks help if you could see it it's just gonna take a little drop little bitty 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 drop just like that we're gonna take this red eye and we're just gonna place it right in the eye socket just like that Cool. Now we're gonna do the other side. Same, same. One little bitty drop. Again, you're not, you're just trying to hold it in place, at least in my opinion. You're holding it in place until that clear coat gets over it and gets hard. That will really lock it into place for you. So that one actually went in pretty good right off the bat. You can use the back end of your brush if you've got one around to move it exactly where you want it, just like that. Now I'm gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes and then we'll apply the clear coat over top of it. 
I think the glue has had enough time here. It's been a few minutes. You know what's really cool about this UV clear? Maybe I should do a little video about this Alumalite UV. Is the fact, first of all, it lasts a long time. Um, and, and this stuff's still wet from when I did it before. And the jar's been open. There's no UV light in the garage. Um, so this stuff isn't going to just cure like your other products, right? Uh, you know, like the KBS Diamond Clear, if you leave that open too long, it's going to start curing on you and oh boy, then you got a mess. So uh, this stuff, it just stays nice and, and moist until it gets in contact with that UV light. Now, if you're doing this in a, a garage or a shop that's got windows, I would say be cautious about leaving it open around the windows and stuff because you don't want the uh, sun to hit it because the sun will cause it to actually start to set. Um, UV light in the sun, right? That's why we wear sunblock or wear long sleeves when we're out fishing is to protect us from that dangerous UV light that causes the cancer and all that junk. Don't want that. Don't want any of you guys to experience that. It's just all around bad. So we're going to brush this on a lot thinner than we did that first one. Um, just because we're going to do, first of all, we're going to do two coats. I think I said that earlier. Um, but secondly is we don't want to wash out or get so much of that clear in there that it actually washes out the the pattern on this bait you know these these baits have pretty decent little scale pattern on them um, and and we don't want to put the clear in there where it fills in that 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 scale pattern so much that it it washes it out and you can't even notice it like I did on that other bait um, that was just that was just a mistake is all that was. Um, nobody's perfect, right? It was kind of actually good for this experiment with this paint to see because it really provided a flat, clean surface so we would be able to tell what it really looked like. Um, all right, just about got this here. Just trying to make sure we've got a good, solid, even coat over the whole bait where it's not going to totally wash out. Got to get all that extra off of that eye. Wash out any of our pattern here. Sorry, I'm blocking the light here. Again, just trying to make sure we got it all the way coated here. Now let's take a look. Using the light, I'm just checking it to see if there's any places that are still dull, like right there on the back. I missed the back. Okay, that's got a nice little coat on it. Okay, let's go around. Looking good, looking good. Like I said, I'm intentionally going with a pretty thin coat. It did not take a lot of this to do this coat. All right, I'm content with that. I'm gonna set the brush down. Going to remove this guy. Put a little tail thing, I'm a jigger in it just to have it. And then we're going to put the eye hook or the hanging hook back on there. And we're gonna let it hang for just a minute like we did the other one, just so everything can settle evenly. And you can see it up there hanging. Maybe, there it is, just right here. And then we're going to go ahead and get it in the UV chamber with the other one, and then we'll do our second coats. Okay, just pulled both baits out of the Aluma UV, out of the UV chamber. It's actually going on my giveaway baits right now. Um, I was painting those while I was waiting for these to finish curing. Here is the first one we did. This is the one we painted black, then we put the Aluma UV on, cured it over in the curing chamber, and then we painted it with the color shifting paint. Um, I think by doing that, we actually hurt this bait. We wiped out the scale pattern on the side um, and the, the color shift just isn't as prominent as it is on the other one. There's some blemishes here and there because I rushed that first coat of, of clear. But all in all, this turned out pretty okay. It's still going to catch fish. Here in California, green will catch fish. It's, it's almost like a pearlescent paint at this point. You know, that it's got that metal flake, that shine to it. And I just dumped it. That's okay. It's, it's cured. So that's number one. 
Now this is the one that turned out a lot better. This is the one that's got that good scale pattern still visible on it. Um, the paint actually shifts a lot better on this one. When you get it in the right light, you know, uh, we're under, under light in the garage now because it's dark outside. But when the sunlight hits this, it really still dances really well and shifts from that red to that green. I can see it with my naked eye. I'm hoping you guys can see it with the camera. It's, it's happening. It's just not as prominent. Again, I think that clear coat probably knocks it down a little bit, which just, you know, it's just to be expected with any product. I really like this clear coat. It's working really well for me. Uh, I can brush it on. It doesn't go bad like some of the other stuff just by sitting around if I don't paint baits for a week or two. So anyway, there it is. The Color Shift Green Stuff Works Color Shift Paints. Um, if you're going to do it, I'd recommend just painting it black and then start painting the, your colors after you've heat set or whatever your, your black. And then just lightly go over it with your colors like this we did here. Over here you can see we lost our scale pattern and I still think this pattern's a little better. They both turned out really good, but this one is just a little better. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give me that thumbs up if you did. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. I really appreciate that. And we'll have some new and exciting videos coming in 2020.